We were hearing there the complexity of just at this one school. Can a school be truly secular? Is it necessary to ban prayer rituals to cre create the cohesion between pupils of different faiths? Well, Aj Ajmal Mazroor is an imam at a mosque in London. Uh, good afternoon, Mr Mazroor. Good afternoon. You, you're unhappy about this judgment this morning, I understand. Very disappointed, actually. Um, my daughter goes to a school not very far away from uh, this particular school that we're discussing. And her predicted A-level grades are for A-stars. So are her friends, Muslims and non-Muslims. They actually pray together. They pray at their lunch break. The school has outstanding performance and they provide amazing students to various amazing, amazing universities across our country and abroad. So if other schools are successfully providing a cohesive space, a successful space, and their students are doing very well while praying, or not praying for that matter, why is this school so much of an exception? What does this school wish to gain by banning prayer that they could not achieve by allowing prayer? I'm baffled. I, I, it would seem, though, from looking at the High Court ruling, that the, the one of the comments from the judge was that the pupil could choose to go to another school, and you have sent your daughter to another school. Isn't there an argument that it's down to each school? I mean, it, obviously, it depends. There's a very complex p picture of how schools are structured, but it's down to the different schools if, a, if it wants to be entirely secular, that it can, it can be so, and you can send your daughter to a different one. Yes, but if I went to a school and I was told, actually, she is not allowed here because she has a particular preference, then that would be quite discriminatory. I think there is a fundamental misunderstanding amongst some people. To be a Muslim, you have to believe in one God. You have to believe in the ethos of Islam. And part of the ethos of Islam is that you pray five times a day. So for me to be a Muslim, I need to be able to pray my five daily prayers. To deny my right to pray is to deny my right to be a Muslim. That fundamental difference must be made clear to everybody. So by school saying to kids, don't need to pray here, we can't allow you to pray here, go and make up your prayers when you go home because you've missed it, that's not an exception. That is being enforced onto a pupil that could otherwise flourish with 10 minutes prayer break. I can't see any reason why or any logical reason why one would say no to prayers. Ajmal Mazra, stay with us. I'm going to bring in Polly Toynbee. She's Guardian columnist, uh, well-known Guardian columnist, but also she's vice president of Humanists UK. Uh, Polly, uh, good afternoon. Good the afternoon. This uh, this particular school is 50% Muslim pupils. How do you respond to the point that Ajmal Mazroa made there, that at the particular prayer in a lunch break, which takes, what, five, ten minutes, how can that, why should that be, does it need to be so divisive? I think it's time to have a whole new national policy to say, you know, state schools don't do religion. We have an extraordinary situation, and I can understand why Muslims might feel upset, because in the 1980s, you know, not ancient law, uh, they brought in a rule saying every school has to do an assembly of essentially Christian nature, which is ridiculous and uh, quite unfair. And it's time that we did away with that because some schools still feel that they are obliged to, others just pay no attention to it. But I think the only answer to this is to simply take religion out of school, not to take the teaching about religion. Of course, you know, religious education is very important, comparative religions, people should understand about them. But religion as worship has no place in a school. And I think often if you have some very devout, say, Muslim pupils who do demand to pray, it can, can inti intimidate other Muslims who may not want to, or who you know, may come from a less devout background, perhaps. I think it can be threatening to others. It can be coercive. And that basically, let's, there's, no room for, there's no room for mm. worship in a state school in this country, which is one of the most atheistical in the world. Ajmal Masroor, that is one of the points that was made by the school, that there were students who were quite happy not to perhaps be praying and who felt coerced into doing so. And even there's a reference in the, in the court case to one child who stopped going to choir because she had been told it was forbidden. Well, look, not only prayers, kids could be coerced into taking drugs. 
Um, and that, of course, is not acceptable. We need to create a space where kids, people feel safe. And this is the, the, the duty of the school. But it still doesn't sit well with this pluralistic, inclusive, multicultural society that we live in. If secularism is so intolerant of religion, then secularism should hang its head in shame because secularism by nature is actually telling the rest of the world that we are pluralistic, we are pragmatic, we are modern. And if they're saying there is no room, and we do respect to Polly, I've known her for years, and I read her columns quite fervorously, you know, quite I like Thank what you. she writes. <laughs> but on this particular point, I disagree. Secularism is um, by far probably more tolerant than any other uh, non-religious ideologies I've seen in our time. So I think we should be talking about inclusivity rather than exclusivity. And a, a, a pupil praying in a space which is safe, my daughter prays in a school and nobody has forced her. I've never told her to pray. Her non-Muslim friends, they go together to prayer room. They wait for my daughter to finish her prayers. It hasn't impacted her education. It hasn't impacted the cohesion. In mm -hmm. fact, it's also a very strict school and it is done very well in the national curriculum. So Let the idea that there something. is no room for worship Let me, in the school, okay. I, I, want to, I, I think it's unfair. Polly, I, I just need to say one thing about secularism. We as humanists have our strong defenders of people's rights to hold their own beliefs. It's just not imposing them on other people, not in public places. Not, I mean, not in, okay. you know, not So not should, in should schools that, not sing uh, God Save the King? Well, that's not to do with really to do with religion. That's our national it has to, everything to do with religion. It is no, Christianity it's a, it's that is, that's anthem, been imposed on people, and we don't. But, but that. Polly, my point about using it is that nobody. Th I mean, perhaps some people do think it's, but lots of people don't think it's something to do with religion because it's just embedded in our culture. I mean, there are reports that the school sings "I vow to thee, my country," sings Jerusalem. These are it's the sort of Christianity that's embedded in our culture. Uh, how do you strip that? out to make something truly secular? I think that's quite difficult, but I think, you know, that you need to learn about all cultures. You certainly need to learn about Christian culture. So much of our literature and art, everything comes from it. But also you need to learn about all religions. We really need to understand Islam. We really need to understand Hinduism, all of these things. But they need to be taught as education, not as an occasion for worship within a school. Polly Toynbee. There is a, there is a problem and here, though. Are we going to We've say, got seconds, Adwell. To be able to become secular, are we going to say no, Christ, uh, no Christmas holidays, no Easter holidays? They're all inspired by Christianity, religion. So we can't really run away from it. I'm saying let's keep them all and let's create space for people to pray too. It would do amazing to our country and our people. Hajmal Masroud, Polly Toynbee, thank you both. Now coming up on the programme.